Yeah, the the fantasy booking, I I would have just the the WCW angle. Um, it's the same mistake that AEW is running into now. They shouldn't. Tony should have never said anything about buying Ring of Honor, and just one day, boom, Ring of Honor. Jonathan Grisham up. shows up, and yeah, and now that I'm glad that Joe Samoa Joe's back on TV, but mm-hmm. he shows up with the Ring of Honor TV title. I mm-hmm. didn't even know he had it. I seem to remember one title defense on AEW television. Maybe that's uh, that's another thing. So when we talk about AEW and we're talking about who do you feature and you know and uh, you know who's getting the spotlight and it seems like guys are on TV one week and then they disappear for for months for for yeah several weeks and then all of a sudden they're back and not keeping in consistent storyline. I thought it was interesting that on Wednesday. The main event was the ROH Pure Title. Mm-hmm. Not that it wasn't a. I thought it was a very good oh, match. Oh, wonderful match! Um, but I just, I, like I said, I, I, I question some of his card placement at, at times. And I know you want to start off with with MJF and the trios. Thing. I think I would have made paperweight for MJF. Oh yeah, make people. I would have. I, I, I would have uh, put that either at the at the top of the hour or maybe even the last segment. Um, cause you want to, you know, the whole key to the, every, everything you, you're trying to get that, that highest rating you can get, make them wait, don't yeah. give it to it. Don't, you know, uh, don't give me dessert before I finish my steak. Yeah. You know? And the, the whole thing with when Danielson comes out uh, and he's like, woohoo with Wheeler Yuta, mm-hmm. um, and then Jericho comes out and they're mm-hmm. like, Oh, oh. and that's, yeah. that's building too, but that's, yeah, that almost doesn't need any any that's the thing i like about tournaments is you can just throw people together that doesn't it doesn't have to make sense Mm -hmm. and danielson and and jericho it just happens to work out that that bracket you know yeah and it's going to be the rematch from from all out and that's going to be a great match because i think i don't know why people shit on chris jericho lately i mean he he didn't have some great matches with eddie kingston but who cares but I, I like Chris Jericho. I like Brian Danielson. I think he is the best I wrestler. I think Jericho's to be commended because when people were giving him crap about his shape and then he went he got, got in crazy tremendous shape. crazy shape again. So yeah, and Jericho hats a, off Chris Jericho for yeah, that one. One of the best of all times, I think, and uh, still responsible for one uh, probably my first big freak out in wrestling when he's doing all this stuff to. Uh, Dean Malenko and running down Victor Malenko mm-hmm. and Dean Malenko will never get another title Boris, shot again. Boris. Oh yeah. Yeah. Boris. Boris uh, Victor is his brother. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he's running down Boris Malenko and then Dean's never going to get another title shot. Mm-hmm. And then he's dressed up as Syncope and then he throws who or who he throws himself out and then has the match with Chris Jericho takes off the Syncope mask. It's Dean Malenko. And, and that should include Bischoff in to these guys could draw yeah because that if you go back and watch it it's it's one of the loudest pops you're ever going to hear when he yeah. takes that mask off yeah i mean people, it's it, it people went crazy for that uh, the yeah. d malenko was over in wcw with the whole chris jericho thing when he wins the wcw united states title mm-hmm. and then him and eddie have that match at the great american bash and i know people like to talk shit about dean malenko but he was incredible to me the texas cloverleaf is one of my favorites and Everything he did made sense, and but it, it's, it's the same mistakes with the ECW WCW invasion is, is mm-hmm. happening now with Ring of Honor, and if that's what I would have done, fantasy booking again. I, I almost I almost think you should have uh, instead of Rampage. Of course, Rampage debuted before that sale, but it's mm-hmm. almost like you need to turn Rampage into the ROH show. Yeah, so those guys can get featured properly, properly, and then leave. You know. Uh, leave dynamite for your AEW hardcores and, and your, and your storylines you're trying to advance there. Cause with, you know, ROH doesn't have a regular show and you need something to build toward what, how are the, you know, how are we going to build towards those pay-per-views and make those sell yeah, without, it, you know, without super featuring cards. guys. Yeah. And, and that's the thing with uh, Claudio Classignoli being the the Ring of Honor champion it doesn't mm-hmm. mean much now. Cause he, he doesn't have a company to represent. Yeah. I mean, he, it's like kind of the the career achievement award 
title here, you know, oh, Claudia's never been world champion. Okay, now you're world champion, but you're champion of a company that technically doesn't, I mean, it exists only in pay-per-view form only. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's it's you know. And to me, that's disrespectful to Claudio because I think he is one of the best workers of all time. And I think not putting him and Chris Hero together in WWE was a very missed opportunity. Oh, man, yeah. I talked to Chris about that, too, when uh, 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 a couple of years ago at FanFest, and I was like, I wish they'd put the Kings <laughs> in and, together. And, uh, last time I saw him, when I was, because uh, I asked him, I was like, what's, what's going on with all the, the jerseys and stuff? He's like, they, and he's like they, they tell me to cover up. I was like, okay, but you're Chris Hero. Yeah. I was like, you were never, like, you were scared. You were skinny, mm -hmm. but you still didn't you, like you weren't going to turn any heads physically. Right. I was like, so be, ch be a chubby guy that can do a spinning back heel kick. Yeah. But I, I we went to Charlotte in 20, 20 it's 2011 and uh, ROH was running the, the Cole Grady Center. And I mean, they uh, put on them and the Briscoes put mm -hmm. on one hell of a match i mean just it's crazy yeah i mean you know we as 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 fans and things like that we we see stuff and just for some whatever reason we don't always get what we want yeah and so and uh i liked the match with the briscoes and ftr but it still wasn't enough build up for me mm -hmm. and the payoff was great but now they're 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 not doing anything with FTR. I think the I think the build was supposed to be well. I, I mean, simple. Um, I guess they kind of kept it simple. Was like, okay, this is two of the greatest tag teams in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, this is their meeting. You know, we're gonna meet. But yeah, there wasn't a lot of there. What there wasn't a lot of, of build up. Yeah, and that's a that's a problem with AEW because the the whole thing with CM Punk coming back the first time. And he gets beaten by John Moxley. Mm -hmm. So, and then he immediately beats John Moxley. How about instead you have Punk literally training to kill a dragon? Like he mm -hmm. is, he is lifting weights. He gets in really great and keep him off TV. Mm -hmm. Just do small vignettes where he's like doing like clubber lane training and just, and then John Moxley can get the shine a little bit. He can be, cause. John Moxley thinks that he gets hit, he cuts himself, and that makes for a good. <laughs> like it's, it doesn't make for a good wrestling match. It's, it, I, and I think that's what he needs. He really needs a good feud to sink his teeth into. Although, props to John Moxley for trying to bring the locker room together the other night. That was a good was, promo. Yeah, and one he, of one of his one of his best probably. And he's only got. A he's couple, not a super promo guy. No, but that was only, a good one. He's only got a couple that stick out in my mind where he's got the one where he lost to Seth Rollins, where he's talking about you work a job and and all. it was very Dusty Rhodes-esque. Mm -hmm. And then the one the other night, because it seemed like for once he wasn't trying to pretend to be a wrestler. He mm -hmm. was being a wrestler. He was being John Moxley. He's not being Terry Funk, great value. He's not being great value, Terry Funk. He's not being Nick Cage's number one or Nick Gage's number one fan. He's being John Moxley. Yeah, and that's what I think is missing. Came off as very genuine, and that's that's more of what they need. Yeah, they um, they need stuff like that. They need real emotion, and I think now's the time for John Moxley to really put put the title on him and really make him the champion or put the title on Danielson and really let him be a fighting champion that it means something when Brian Danielson comes out and he is going to cripple you. He's yeah. Let him, yeah. Let him be the American dragon. Yeah. Just where I don't, I don't want to see him every week. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe it's just like he, he's in the back with his feet propped up. I don't think you need, I don't think you need necessarily the, the champion every week. Hmm. But, we never saw Hogan every week. But you, but you definitely need some cohesiveness in, okay, who are my, you know, I've got these 10 guys or whatever. These are my top guys, or i got 20 guys or whatever. Okay, this is who I'm going to feature. It's it's hard for me, um, and I'm glad um, Death Triangle won the trios titles. Yes. It's just it, 
again, I, I don't know why I have such a problem with this guy, but it's hard for me to, to watch Orange Cassidy when he starts <laughs> out with the with the nonchalant, you know. I mean, if you're – I just don't get the whole gimmick. Uh, it's, uh, it's something that – you missed the window on just being a, a hair too old for. Um, <laughs> no, I'm I'm not being insulted. An age it. joke. Like, it people now confuse. They didn't watch pro wrestling because they liked pro wrestling. They watched anime because they liked. They were wanting superheroes and they didn't understand it. I wouldn't be surprised at all if Orange Cassidy was a kid that grew up watching Dragon Ball Z. And whenever Goku, he starts off all silly and he's like, oh, my head hurts. Oh, I'm tired. I'm hungry. And then when it's time to fight somebody, he's. Oh! And that then could be a, that could be a generational thing, too, because I, I, I notice how much. AEW tends to take stock in uh, what, what they do, Fighter Fest and yeah. this, uh, they, uh, the whole cosplay slash gamer um, audience that they try to go for. But I'm like, are those people really watching pro? That's, that's the only one thing I question. They are don't. those people really watching pro wrestling? No, they they are watching. It's it's the internet fandom of people that just they say they like pro wrestling, but what they really mean is they hate WWE. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and so they will watch anything and anything, anything that's not WWE. Yeah, if, if it has a Japanese guy, even if the match stinks to the rafters, mm. it was the best. And if there's right. 50 flips, it was the best. Mm. But if a guy grabs, uh, and that's the whole reason why um, I I really do like, um, I, <laughs> I really like Zack Sabre Jr. more than... Um, a lot of other British guys that were just in AEW, and because he grabs and he grabs a hold, he's twisting something. Mm-hmm. He works it the whole time. I thought for somebody that works that very athletic, um, almost gymnastic style, but in the few spots that I saw, it kind of made sense. Was uh, Will Osprey? Mm-hmm. And I was like, why Why in the world are that? Apparently there's heat with Kenny Omega. But I'm, like, but I'm like, why in the world would you not sign this guy? Well, because he went around the world and made, and I'm not a huge fan of his style. Mm-hmm. Personally, I think he's, uh, I, I like him personally. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he blew Omega out a bunch of times and then they wrestled once or twice and mm-hmm. he gassed Omega out. And yeah. And Will Ospreay, he can do all the flippy stuff, but he's actually a very good wrestler, too. Yeah. And so he he took Omega into deep waters and mm-hmm. gassed him, and yeah. he didn't like it. And Omega, yeah, just doesn't want anything to do with the guy. No, no, and Will Ospreay, he, he called a spade a spade. He's like, look, I, I'd like to be here more, but I don't like Kenny Omega. Yeah. And Kenny Omega has a big thing to do with with WW or AEW, and so it's preventing Will Ospreay from coming in. And I think he could do a lot with put the TNT title on him, mm-hmm. and because uh, he's never going to get boring for well for a year doing the flippy stuff and whatever. He can have tons of great matches with everybody. Oh, like I said, I I don't want to make this this uh, uh, show today all about AEW. What? <laughs> Remember when Jay White was a big deal? Yes. What happened to that guy? <laughs> uh, he's gone. They like, yeah, it's like he, they when he they introduced him, it's like he was the second coming. Yes, and I, I haven't seen him in months. No, and I, just, he just quietly disappeared. Yes, yeah, switchblade pops up and then he's gone. It's crazy. And, I don't and, understand that either. Yeah, it's yeah, I, and I don't always want to keep talking about AEW, but it's just. <sighs> There's so many missed opportunities there. And I, I think now is the time. And WWE knows it. That's why they're they're making jokes. Oh, they're, yeah. It, it, they're very aware of, of what's going on over there. It's the, the whole thing of where they, uh, they're making jokes about backstage fighting. And, and certain people are like, I told you that the guy wasn't, it wasn't because of his work we didn't want anything they, to do with it. They him. sicked Megan on him, told him not to tamper and all that kind of stuff oh, yeah. they know yeah and and rousey is doing her whole uh she, she got into a fight with or she's never been in a backstage fight with these five women and yeah it's, 
<laughs> they they know what's going on. Yeah, that that's an interesting. Well, that's what you you know when you troll those guys from the beginning. Mm-hmm. That's what you get. 